Hi friends, in this episode we can see about the cooling water treatment method, the chemicals used for the different type of treatment. Due to water's ability to dissolve most substances to some extent and its ability to support biological life, every cooling water system is subjected to potential operational problems. These are differentiated as deposit formation or scaling, corrosion, biological deposition and corrosion. Factors affecting the scale formations are water temperature, alkalinity or acidity, concentration of scale forming salts, operating condition of the process, physical fouling, microbiological concentration in cooling water and flow rate of the cooling water. These are all the factors affecting the scale formation. The methods to control the scale formation are softening the makeup water to remove hardness salts from makeup water. This is a what soft water is used, then uh, the water is costly, then uh, the system TDS will be remain same, remain same but uh, the scale formation will be reduced. Keep scale forming salts cooling water system by pH adjustment, dosing of polyphosphate, pH is uh, adjusted by adding acid, sulfuric acid is normally used, dosing of argonophosphate as scale inhibitors. Control of fouling and biofouling, limiting cycle of concentration to reduce the ionic concentration in cooling water system, periodical chemical cleaning of heat exchangers, and mechanical high pressure water jet cleaning of the exchangers. These are all the methods to control the scale formation in the cooling water system. If the cooling water treatment is based on corrosion, you can see now. Corrosion falls in three basic categories, general corrosion, localized pitting corrosion or galvanic corrosion. General corrosion takes place over the entire metal surface while localized pitting takes place at a small anode and because of smaller area this is typically more severe, pitting will be more severe than the general corrosion. Galvanic corrosion occurs when one metal sacrifices itself to protect another. This would occur when two dissimilar metals are in contact. The causes, main causes of corrosion is dissolved oxygen, dissolved on suspended solids, acidity or alkalinity in water, water velocity, temperature, microbiological growth, high chloride or sulfate content, fouling and deposit corrosion. The pH or alkalinity of the water is extremely important as it affects corrosion significantly. As a general rule, corrosion potential decreases and pH increases. But as the pH increases, so does the potential for scale will be more because TDS value will be high. So pH will also increase. Now we can see the corrosion control method. pH adjustment. pH is adjusted by using H2 for dosing. Sulfuric acid is used to maintain the pH. Polyphosphate dosing. Sodium hexamatophosphate dosing. Ferrosulfate dosing and cathodic protection. Corrosion inhibitors. Anodic, anodic inhibitors are chromate, orthophosphate, nitrate and orthosilicate. Cathodic inhibitors are polyphosphate, zinc, molybdate and phosphonate. Corrosion resistant materials in condenser that is titanium is used to avoid corrosion. Titanium coated it's a or titanium vessel are used then corrosion is minimized. Anti-corrosive coating also will be effective if it is coated inside the heat exchanger or in the vessel where it cooling water is used. Keeping the system clean also will help to avoid corrosion. Now fouling. Fouling is a deposition of suspended solids or buildup of, build of microbiological organism within heat exchanger and cooling tower fields. Warm water, aeration, nutrients and sunlight transform a cooling tower into an efficient bioreactor. Types of fouling. Generally, fouling by silt, fouling by corrosion products, microbiological fouling, biological deposition and corrosion fouling. Biological problems are created by both large and microscopic organisms. These are weeds, floating debris, muzzle and oysters, etc. Microbiological induced corrosion MIC is microbiological problems are generally referred to as slime deposits such as algae, fungi and bacteria. These are all arabic organisms. Due to sunlight, algae, fungi and this bacteria will be grown. 
the gelatinous slime produced by many microorganisms can trap sediments thus encouraging fouling and scale even corrosion can be caused by certain organism that produce corrosive by products and environments corrosion by microorganism is called microbiological induced corrosion biofouling control biocides are used to control microbiological fouling and organic fouling in cooling water continuous chlorine dosing is done for better biofouling control both oxidizing and non oxidizing biocide and biodispersants are used in open type cooling tower whereas non oxidizing biocide only and by on biocide percent are used in closed circuit cooling water type in gulf region gas the water is not exposed to sunlight so aerobic bacteria and algae growth will be not present so oxidizing biocide is not required in ccw type of uh, cooling tower type of biocide oxidizing biocides it has the ability to oxidize organic matter or protein groups non oxidizing biocide prevent normal cell metabolism in any of the following ways alter permeability of cell wall destroy protein group respirate protein block metabolic enzyme reactions biodispersants or non ionic surfactants are used to enhance the effectiveness of biocides various oxidizing biocides are used in cooling water system are as follows chlorine and its various products such as chlorine oxide ozone hydrogen peroxide oxidizing biocides are capable of undergoing oxidative reactions on organic molecules they kill microorganism and contact the dissipate to form harmless non toxic product however their activity is short and require frequent and continuous dosing also high dosages causes delignification of timber and metallic corrosion chlorine is used continuously to maintain the free residual chlorine and time to time shock dosing has to be given to completely kill the microorganism rapid kill cost effective and tolerant of constant contamination that is chlorine dioxide and chlorine minimal environmental impact is ozone hydrogen peroxide and chlorine dioxide in it it is ineffective against sulfur reducing bacteria low residual toxicity toxicity counts approaching potable water standards possible is there all for the oxidizing biocide character non oxidizing biocide methylene bisthiocyanate mbt argonautin compound quaternary ammonium salts copper salts dbnpa to dibromo nitrilo propiono amide select alternating biocide to prevent resistant strains from developing protect against uh, sulfur reducing bacteria it can protect system long after dosing contain biodispersant high dosage for kill possible it is dose more than it will kill biodispersants are improved to improve penetration of biocide within bacterial slime disperse released bacteria and biofilm into bulk water for removal by flow down reduces the ability to for bacteria to attach to system surface it improves performance of both non oxidizing and particularly oxidizing biocides this is the importance of biodispersant when non oxidizing biocide is used in open type cooling tower we have to stop chlorine and chlorine uh, dosage for 24 hours you have to uh, reduce make up or close make up and stop blow down you have to dose non oxidizing biocide and circulate it for 24 hours the next day we have to uh, increase the blow down and reduce the blow down blow down quantity to require uh, tds in the water then you have to uh, add routine make up and chemical dosing so once in 15 days or once in a month non oxidizing biocide is used during that time oxidizing biocide will not be used whereas in ccw only non oxidizing biocide and uh, biodispersants are used to control the microbiological core hope you might have understand the scale control corrosion inhibition corrosion control fouling how fouling is controlled and microbiological growth and its uh, treatment method using chemical 
do not forget to subscribe or share with your colleagues and friends put your like and comment in comment box thank you very much see you in the next episode